This here is the spec sheet on the Cayman GT4 RS. 493 bhp, 450 nm, a 9000 rpm redline, 7 speed PDK, fully adjustable suspension, a mechanical locking differential. The downforce is 25% more than on the Cayman GD4. It is 35 kgs lighter than the Cayman GD4. Impressive, no? No, because this car is more than the numbers. It's more than the spec sheet. The Cayman GD4 RS is a car that's meant to be driven. RPM sounds like. Porsche has gone and taken their best engine, the engine out of the 911 GD3, and they put it in the chassis of this Cayman. The GD4 RS. It's not about the spec sheet, it's about the sensation. Let's first talk about the engine because it utterly dominates the driving experience. Just listen to it. It's always, always in the background. It's like the gods themselves are singing behind you. So guttural. So raw. Now this engine, it's not the same engine as the Cayman GT4. It's a completely different engine. This is the engine out of the 911 GT3. Obviously, it's more powerful than the Cayman GT4. 79 more BHP, 20 Nm more torque. But again, more than the numbers, it's the sensations that overwhelm you. It's so immediate, everything is so direct. The throttle responses are something I've never felt before in a car. Direct, telepathic. We keep talking about how electric cars have instantaneous responses. Here you go, instantaneous responses. This naturally aspirated engine is something else. In terms of sheer performance, it's there. It's so fast, so rapid. And being a naturally aspirated engine, the power, it's all concentrated at the top end. So if you really want to get the most out of it, you've got to push. Get out to the top reaches of the rev range. That's where the power is. That's where the performance is. And you're rewarded, not just with shove, but with that noise. Unbelievable. Now this is the same engine as the 911 GD3, but it makes a little less power than the GD3. And that's because this engine is now mid-mounted, not rear-mounted like on the GD3. That means longer exhaust pipes. Longer exhaust pipes means more back pressure, and more back pressure means a little less power. But that said, it is also lighter than the 911 GD3. The power to weight ratio of this car is identical to the 911 GD3. The 0 to 100 times, identical to the 911 GD3. It feels so bloody fast. It feels so good. This engine, it's not just a power plant, it's an emotion. It's singing right behind you. It drives the driving experience of this car. It defines it. Something cool that Porsche has done for this GT4 RS. They put the intakes right next to your ears. So when you're driving along, you can hear that suction, that induction noise. The unbelievable. I've never heard an engine that sounds this theatrical. 
<laughs> You've got the exhaust somewhere in the background, but that induction noise, it dominates the experience in the, inside the cabin. You can hear the whooshing, the sucking. There's really little else like it. Then there's the transmission. In typical RS fashion, no manual, only PDK. You can control it via the paddles or you can use a stick. Now this PDK transmission, it's a seven speed transmission and Porsche calls it a low ratio transmission. One of the biggest complaints with the Cayman GT4 was how tall the gears were. But that problem, solved, completely solved with the GT4 RS. You've got shorter gears, that means you hit the red line quicker, but you also accelerate much quicker. And this transmission is bespoke. It's not the same transmission out of the Cayman GT4. It's not the same transmission out of the 911 GT3 either. This is bespoke to this car, to the sort of driving this car is going to do. The shifts are lightning quick. You've got something called PDK Sport and that puts the gearbox on its tippy toes. It's constantly on it. So if you let the revs drop, it downshifts. It's constantly keeping itself on the boil. And the boil here, listen to that. On the boil here is right in the upper echelons of the rev range. So it really keeps that engine spinning hard and it keeps you moving fast. Do I miss the manual? It would have been nice, but I honestly don't miss it. This thing is clinical. It doesn't ask for, you don't even need to do the paddles. It just does it on its own. Now the engine, the transmission, that's one part of the experience, but so much of the RS experience is also the lightweightingness and the aerodynamics. And that's exactly what I want to tell you about right now. And the first thing is the carbon bonnet. This beautiful swan neck wing in carbon. Thinner rear glass. Door pulls and lighter door cards and even lightweight carpet. All of this together saves a total of 35 kgs over the already light Cayman GT4. The ride height, it's lowered by 30 mm compared to the Cayman GT4. This front diffuser is adjustable in four settings manually. You look underneath the car, you've got these fins and these veins that direct air to the rear diffuser to make it more effective. On the bonnet, you've got NACA ducts that cool the brakes, but the point is they have a very little coefficient of drag penalty, and that's why they're so popularly used on race cars. My favorite feature aerodynamically are those vents above the arches. They essentially reduce front axle lift at speed, giving you more grip at the front. And obviously, you've got that massive rear wing. Adjustable in three settings makes the Cayman GT4 look really aggressive, and overall, that light weighting, that aerodynamics, it's given the Cayman GT4 RS a 23 second lap time advantage over the regular GT4 on the Nürburgring. The handling of this car is unbelievable, unreal. The turning, it's so sharp. There's literally no roll. You're cornering absolutely flat. And the limits, the sheer limits of this car are so high. That mid-engine balance, you can feel it constantly. There's no weight in the front, weight in the rear. It just rotates around its center so beautifully. You've got so much feel through the wheel, through the chassis. When it's on its side, you can feel how much grip is there at the front axle. And there's tons of it tremendous amounts of grip and getting out of corners as well. It's always on it. It's looking for traction. This is not a car that wants to slide. I mean, I'm sure you can slide it if you want to, but this is about lap times. This is about clinical performance. It's about perfecting those corners. Now the suspension is ball jointed throughout the springs and dampers they've got their own bespoke setting for the GT4 RS. And this is supposed to be a hardcore car, and it feels it. 
that incredible responses from the chassis, from the steering, this thing does corners like nothing else. The brakes too, carbon ceramics on this, an expensive option, but they've got so much braking performance. And the way the chassis reacts on the brakes, the rear end doesn't get light and squirmy when you slam the brakes. It's, it's just so poised, so much in control. It gives you so much confidence behind the wheel to drive it and push it hard. It's a car with ridiculous levels of performance, but it's also a car that you can get into and drive hard from the get-go. But I'll tell you what really surprised me about the GT4 RS. It's the ride quality. I expected it to be a mad engine. I expected it to be a crazy handler. But I also expected it to be crazy stiff because this is a hardcore car. But you know what? The ride is genuinely good. It rounds off all of these bumps. This is not an ideal road. It's far from ideal. There's a lot of bumps, potholes, typical Indian road. But you know what? The, the Cayman GT4, it just deals with everything. If you're going fast over smaller bumps, you barely feel it in the cabin. The damping, it's phenomenally good. It just rounds off all the edges of all the sharp bumps. Now, the only downside is that it's lower down to the ground. That ground clearance is a problem. So, if you've got bigger bumps, speed breakers, that sort of stuff, okay, your Cayman GT4 RS is going to struggle. But over keeping you comfortable on the inside, I'm not rattling my teeth out. I'm not shattering my spine with every bump I go over. Yes, it moves up and down, but it deals with it. It doesn't transfer so much of it to me, which is the important bit. But I come back to that handling. It's that agility of the car. It's the ability to lean on all of that grip that it has. Rotate it so effectively, so confidently. I've never driven this road so quickly in my life. As with any Porsche, you can go insane with the spec and the car we are driving has close to rupees 70 lakh in options. The single most expensive option is the Wysak pack at rupees 32 lakhs. It basically specs the bonnet, the air intakes, the cooling intakes, the airbag cover, the mirror trims, the rear wing, all of that in a carbon weave finish. You also get titanium tailpipes, the roll cage goes from steel to titanium and checking that YSAC pack option gives you the option to spec magnesium wheels, though this one has forged aluminum wheels. There is other stuff. The shark blue paint is a rupees 6.6 .6 lakh option. The yellow accents are a rupees 1.4 lakh option. The front axle lift system costs rupees 5 lakhs. Carbon ceramic brakes are a 16 lakh rupee option. The paint matching key is a 75,000 rupee option. And the smartphone compartment costs a cool 97,000 rupees. And this doesn't even cover everything on the car. The base price of the Cayman GT4 RS is rupees 2.5 crore. But this particular example has been specced up to rupees 3.2 crores ex showroom. I thought I'd driven good cars, and I have. But I think this is the best one yet. It has to be. With that exhaust, how can it not be? For more stories, I would stop, get out of the car, talk about it, and give you my verdict. I'm not gonna do that here, because I don't want to stop driving. This is a car that just begs for you to be behind the wheel. It's a car that's addictive beyond a point. That engine sound, the way the steering feels, the way everything feels under you. The sort of dynamic agility that it delivers, it's addictive. So there you go, that's my verdict. I don't want to get out of the car. I don't want to give it back. I think I've got some more time till sundown. Let me enjoy it. Leave me to it, please. That's what 9,000 RPM sounds like.
पेपर उठा पेपर उठा है नो लिटरिंग बॉयज नो लिटरिंग Ah. It's got me genuinely out of breath. I felt better than sex. Genuinely. It got me out of breath. Just like that too. <laughs> What a car man. My god.